checked in, brother pastor. She checked in. <laughs> Amen. St. Joseph, when all God's children get together, what a time. This part of the service is we call to worship, and so worship, we can become traditional, and so we should worship God because he loves us. When we're down, he delivered us, and so let us worship as we prepare our heart to worship. We should be reminded that this is a moment of prayer and praise to our God. We ask each of you to focus your heart and mind on the Lord. James 4, 7 teaches us to submit ourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. We lift our hands in humble submission to your will. We resist the devil. 
and by the power of your Holy Spirit, we ask that you would cause Jesus to magnify himself in our midst. service for intercessory prayer. We have a long list on this prayer list, but no matter how long it is, God is still in the blessing business. Say amen, somebody. So I'm going to call out these names, and then there are names that you may have. You, can, you should be able to take them to the Lord, even though they may not be on this list. There's so much happening into the world. There's so many brothers and sisters who are asking for prayer. And that's a good thing. Amen? We have Michael Sean Boatwright. Sister Alberta Bowden. Sister Carolyn DeAndre Campbell. Sister Kay Carroll. A children's youth department ministry. Claire Clayton. Deacon Rodney Collins and family, Daryl Cole, Denise Coley and family, Master Trey Crocker, Pastor Richard Teresa Curry and family, Blanche Day and family, Inez Butler Drain, Preston and Bernice Drummer, 
Sister Ode Frazier, Brother Otis Glover, Brother Ivory Goodwin, Shirley Green, Sister Michelle Grooms, Antonio Stephanie and Leonard Hackney, Sister Cora Hackley, Major Holton and family, Vernetta Jackson, the jail ministry, Dakia Jones and family, Ernest Morrell, the Jefferson and Pearson family, Brother Ronald Leaf, Brother James LeCount, Brother Adrian Stanley Limerick, Antoinette Lovely, Sister Phyllis Luckett, Tanala Manning, Brother Larry McKenzie, Brother Terry and Sister Daphne Mitchell Jr., Brother Terry and Sister Adrienne Mitchell and infant daughter, Kanaya, Sister Hilda Myers, Brother D'Angelo Parker, Deja Pearson, Brother Bentley and Brother Nathaniel Porter, Tia Reed and family, Sister Elizabeth Robinson, Sister Brenda Sapp, Sister Bertha Scott, Jimmy Simmons, Cameron Smalls, Deacon Ralph Smith, Cantrella, Darrell, Shatila, uh, and Springfield, Brother Michael Shikari, Tony and Trey Sutton, Sister Lavencia Sutton, Brother Tucker Jr., Sister Hattie and Brother Quint Wallace, Brother Bobby Wright and family, Linda Wright, Travis Wright and family, Gerard Smith, Marcus Campbell. Let us go in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come right now. We just want to say thank you. We want to thank you for waking us up this morning. We want to thank you for blessing us to be in our right mind. We want to thank you for bringing us to worship this morning, to worship you, the God who loves us and care for us. We thank you today, Lord. We thank you for your mercy, O oh Lord, for today. We thank you, O oh Lord, for your love unconditionally, Lord, in spite of us. In spite of our disobedience, O oh God, you still love us. In spite of not worshiping with you, you still love us. So we want to say thank you this morning. Thank you for your power. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for covering us in your holy name. Now, Lord, you know the names on this list. You created them in your image. And so, God, we ask that you would bless each and every one of them, O oh God. Bless them in a mighty way. Heal those who need healing. Wipe away the tears to those who are crying right now, inside but not out. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, bless St. Joseph. Bless your church, O oh God, individually and collectively. Continue to give us wisdom, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Order our steps in your name, Jesus, in your holy name. Pray for Pastor Gregory, Lord. Continue to give him wisdom and knowledge and protect him from all hurt, harm, and danger, sickness, or disease. Empower your pastor that you give us in the name of Jesus. And bless his lovely wife and their children, Lord. Protect them and guide them. Lord, we can't do anything without you. So we come to say you are who you are because you created us to be who we are so we celebrate you this morning Lord and we thank you with all the love you've given us oh Lord keep us together oh Father God keep us together oh Father God teach us your word oh Lord empower us with your love and conviction that we may magnify your name in the name of Jesus bless the church right now oh lord those who are standing and those who've come forth bless them in a mighty way you know their needs many are crying hurting in pain lost their jobs and loved ones wrap your arms around them oh lord in the name of jesus lord we we promise to give you the praise and lord your son your dynamic son one who you prepared to call to preach give him a word lord Brother Simon, a word, let him preach the gospel. Empower him with conviction this morning in the name of Jesus, that he may reach your people and bring them and remind them that there is a living God. 
And so we thank you, Lord. These are the blessings we're asking your name, above every name. Not because we earned it, but because you gave it to us. You gave us your love. You gave your only begotten son that whosoever believe in you should not perish but have everlasting life. And so we thank you, Lord. Thank you in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Oh, how I love Jesus 
because he first loved me. Amen, amen. Boy, that's so much fun, baptizing, I'm telling you. And it's good to have men that are on the staff with you to where when you're doing what you're doing, you can be assured that the other parts are being covered. And uh, boy, it's, it makes your ministry a whole lot, whole lot more pleasant. We are, have been instructed to read from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. 31 and 32. That's Luke, chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. Everybody's ready? Very good. I'm just looking at this clock and wondering why it's saying 1029. Is, is something happened? We lost an hour again? Or the clock? This is supposed to be an atomic clock. Matter of fact, it is an atomic clock. Yeah, okay. Uh oh. The rapture come, man, and I missed it. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, all right. I remember when Sister Cl Cl uh, BB, Sister, you know, uh, Porter, she came by here one time, you know, coming to service, and I think the time was supposed to be changing, and uh, scared her to death, you know, because nobody was here. And she thought, she said, oh, Lord, I thought the rapture had come and, and left me behind. <laughs> I don't forget nothing, boy, I'm telling you. Don't let me get nothing on you. No, I'm just joking, I don't tell stuff. Everybody ready? All right, okay, I'm going to read. Please have your hearts open. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Amen, amen. And we've just read into our hearts the true word of God, praying that it would uh, fester, that it would grow, that it would infect your heart to where you would be productive disciples. Amen. Amen. Oh, well, I tell you what, while I'm up here, let me introduce the, the preacher, okay? Can I do that? Okay. You want me to sing or something? I can't sing. I can't sing. Yeah. But this morning, we are going to be blessed from hearing from one of the sons of the church, one that is so faithful. All of a sudden, it jumped to 1132. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're being, today, I have to, I'm so full of joy, man. I'm back home. I've been gone all week, I'm telling you, to the convention, to the youth convention. You know, I, I really want to get our youth there for that week. I'm telling you what, there's so many activities. They have those kids, I mean, they'd be full of joy, for doing all kinds of things. Uh, uh, dancing, singing, uh, games, you know, just all kinds of Christian things in, in during that week. Classes, you know, little Bible study classes, you know, like a half hour at a time, you know, nothing to uh, bring frustration to them, but to bring uh, joy and delight. And I was, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Uh, so we're gonna have to work on getting our youth there next year to the, uh, to the youth convention. Wonderful. But, Today, again, we're going to be hearing from our son, 
uh, the Reverend Ricky Simon. You know, yeah. Bless him. Say amen when you hear the truth being, being proclaimed, and God will bless you.
to our pastor and whom I love so much. A man of God who want to teach, preach, and want everybody to be excited about the same thing. And that's Jesus. Yeah, yeah, we should, we should clap for that. We shouldn't get to the point that we're so mundane that we can't clap for the truth. So we are thankful to have a pastor like him who's been preaching and teaching for years. And some of us just came to the knowledge. Amen. Amen to St. Joseph, to Sister Gregor, who's always been the sweet, a.k.a. that she is. It's Pastor Lab. <laughs> I told him before, I see why you stay at Troy. <laughs> but we and him in the same boat. To St. Joseph, I love all of you. I'm going to tell you how much I love you. My wife had us up this morning because we was in New Jersey, um, New York for the weekend visiting uh, Rutgers University with my son. And we got up at three. We had to get on the plane to get back here, get a shower, and come to church. Amen. Now, some of us would have said, the Lord know my heart. But he know you so good that he don't bless you so much. You can't sacrifice no time for him. That's what we don't taught ourselves. To, and to my lovely wife, who I love so much, thank her. My kids, my family, my mom, my nieces, thank you all. I love y'all so much for your support. But if you don't mind, we're going to jump right on into this word. And, and as I always say in a joking way, but in a loving way, to all the people that I passed a shout out, the music ministry, the ushers, the sound, but pastor take his time. I'm just going to give you a shout out. <laughs> We thank y'all so much. We thank y'all so much. So much. Thank, thank you for making our pastor feel good. Thank y'all for that. He, he truly deserves it, y'all. I love to see the deacons when I was in the back. They waiting on him to get dressed. And he coming out with his arm barrels. Can't nobody touch him. Deacon Jones, no karate. Deacon Luckett got about two, three guns on him right now. <laughs> Amen. We just love man. Deacon Scott was back there. I say, Pastor, we're well protected. Amen. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, we come to you saying thank you. Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus, just for being here this morning. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up just to see another day. But Father, we ask, Lord Jesus, that you would guide me, Lord. As I rightly divide your word of truth, allow me to stand on your promise. Allow me, Father, to preach with the Holy Ghost power. Father, allow your people's hearts to be illuminated, Lord Jesus. Get them to the point that they can accept your word and know, Lord Jesus, that it's you that's doing the pulling. It's you that's doing the teaching. And whatever word they get from me, filter it in their hearts to accept the living truth. Father, we just say thank you. Father, we say thank you. Father, we ask, Lord, that this word, Lord Jesus, that you have embedded in me, Lord Jesus, that you could embed in all. Allow us all, Lord Jesus, be to be a beacon light of your word. Allow us to be the vessel that you called us to be. We thank you. We love you. In Christ's name we say Amen and praise the Lord. I, I, I got to tell you, this is one sermon that has me very excited. Very excited. And, and I want to preach with this morning with this thought in mind. Too much to lose. Too much to lose. Too much 
to lose. Yeah, yeah. Deacon Brantley, I love you, man. You always catch me, but I love you, brother. Good brother, good brother. Topic is too much to lose. We, we are living in a day of uh, theology that is all about I come get mine, you better get yours. To the extent we have lost the accountability and the responsibility of the communal concern, we have lost now what is a responsibility to be my brother and sister's keeper. Now, I, 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 I get mine, you better get yours. Try to get what's best. Uh, 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 when I read this text, try to pull the best you can from it. I ain't going to rush it, but it just get good to me. But, but when you read this text and you understand the very nature of how God did everything, right from the beginning of creation, suggested to us through the manner of which he created that everything is interconnected and related. God does things by relationships, by interconnectedness, by the community. Jesus, once again in this particular passage, gives us another example of the responsibility of community. Now I know from reading of it you would think that this is just simply that, that, that that's Jesus simply giving Simon Peter a warning that the devil is coming after him. If you were to only do a cursory reading of this story you might walk away thinking that this was just Jesus kind of giving a warning uh, a preview to Simon Peter that the devil wants to take him out but when you put the text in context of the text you will discover that Jesus is up to something much bigger in context of the text they are sitting around what we call Lord's table that they, 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 they have been inside the upper room in the Lord's supper that this supper that represents community this supper that represents communion this supper that represents oneness and if you were to read the verse prior to that one, I read you, they are in a discussion void of Jesus about who's got next. Read it when you get a chance. They, they know that Jesus is on his way out and they know Jesus is about to take leave of them and they are all wondering who is going to be the person in charge. After all, Jesus has not put a secession plan together. Jesus has not hired an apprentice. Nobody knows who got next. And as often happens, whenever your priority is power, you always cancel community. Whenever your priority is who's in charge, you will always find yourself diluting your responsibilities for your assignment. Jesus peeps what they are doing and begins to warn them about not being like the Pharisees, not being like the Gentiles who lord authority over them. But they are so busy trying to figure out who's going to be the power that they don't even hear what Jesus is saying. Don't miss this now. They sitting around the table that represents community. They sitting around the table that represents unity. They are sitting around the table that represents oneness, but their argument has the potential to cancel their community. So Jesus take the opportunity to put out a warning about what they are doing around the table. And he says, Simon 
Simon. Satan is after you to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you. Y'all with me? Now, now, now you're quiet because it don't sound like I said much. Thank you, sister, say that. But, but to some of them, they're a little quiet because they don't think I said much right there. But if you were to read this in the original Greek koinonia text, you will discover that Jesus uses the word you. He, he uses two different Greek words. He uses a singular and a plural. Am I right, Pastor? He, here's what Jesus really said. Simon, Simon. Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as sweet. Now watch it. But I prayed for you. Come, come on back to me now. Simon, Simon. Satan has asked for y'all to sift y'all as wheat. But I prayed for you. Can I say it one more time? Simon, Simon. Satan has asked for y'all. To sift all as wheat. But I didn't pray for all. I only prayed for you. I, 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 I know I'm in a Bible reading congregation. So the question must be. If Satan is after everybody. Why does Jesus only pray for one somebody? I had, a, I, I had to ask the question. If Satan is after y'all. Why is Jesus only praying for you? The Holy Spirit said to me, the reason he's praying for him is because his name means rock. He, he's the only one that's strong enough. He, he's the only one that's powerful enough. He's the one that got more sense than everybody else. And Jesus says, pray for you. Because when the devil comes after y'all, you will be the one to get up first. And when you get up, I need you to go back and help everybody else up. Simon, you got to keep it together. Watch this, church. Because if the devil gets you, he gets all. So I need you to get yourself together because you got too much to lose. Let me show you these three things and, and I pray to God it help you. My first one is don't let the old you mess up your new purpose. Don't let the old you mess up your new purpose. We always want to say, don't make me act like I used to act. Stop talking about it. So y'all might shut down on me right now, but, but we we'll at the beginning. But, but I don't care. I don't care. See, I don't care how long you've been saved, how many scriptures you know. I don't care how much you know Hebrew or Greek. You can have a great systematic theology. You can be in church four generations. There's an old you inside of you. There's an old somebody inside of you. You can know all the Christian songs and all the hymns. But there's an old you inside you. See, see, here's a struggle we all have. When I got saved, my old you didn't disappear. It ain't go nowhere. I thought I get dipped in the pool. I come out the water. I come down the stairway. And when I walk inside the church, I'm supposed to be a brand new person. 
but I found myself wiping off the same old skin, the same old hair, putting on the same clothes I came in here with. I thought I was going to be transformed into something new, but it was still me. I'm going to help somebody today. My old you is simply brought to subjection to my new you. But the challenge is my old you knows tricks that my new you don't. There, there is in all of us some stuff we still shouldn't like. I said shouldn't like. Shouldn't enjoy. Shouldn't, don't, don't want to be around. We shouldn't like it but we still do. See, this is the nature of temptation. Temptation suggests that something put in front of you that gives you the option to say yes when you should say no. The thing about the devil is he customizes temptations. So he doesn't put in front of you what doesn't make you weak. I'm going to say it one more time. He don't put nothing in front of you that don't make you specifically weak. He want to make sure whatever he put in front of you is that thing that's going to pull you away from Christ. He need to put your custom distraction in your face. Because if he can distract you, he got you. He got some of us this morning sitting in here right now. See, see, that's why you must be careful how you talk about other people's situation. Because the only reason you don't have that situation is because that's not your weakness. So instead of talking about it, won't you go ahead and pray for them? If it was your weakness, that was that's what you would fall for. If it was your downfall, that's what you'll step down to. But you got to understand when you see people falling and you say they doing the same thing, start praying for them. When you see habitual offenders, don't thank God you ain't no habitual offender. Start praying for them. One of the most selfish things you can do is thank God for a situation you're not in based on what situation somebody else is in. Lord, thank you I can see because you just saw a blind person. Lord, thank you I can walk because you just saw somebody in a wheelchair. Thank God just for being who he is. You don't need a current situation, a current event, just thanking for who he is. Come on now, G Jesus trips me out right here. And I, I'm almost done. It's going to be crazy, Reverend Brown. Reverend Brown, not Minister Brown. Reverend Brown. See, Jesus trips me out right here. Jesus does something that contradicts his own commandment. Watch him. Watch Christ. He says, Simon, Simon. Stop right there. I got a problem with that. He said, Simon, Simon. I got a real problem with that. To all my Bible scholars, y'all should know where I'm going. You remember when Jesus took a survey and said, who do men? I knew I was in St. Joseph. It, it says, who do men say I am? Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah. Or uh, one of the other prophets. But Jesus said, who do you say I am? Y'all remember he spoke up and said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus prayed saying, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. Now, now then in one of the versions... He says, you will no longer be called Simon. Now that's what Jesus said. Now that's what I got a problem with. Jesus said, you will no longer be called Simon. 
Am I right? Now watch it. He said you will no longer be called Simon. You should be called Petros. Peter. I got another problem. Now Jesus in this story calls him by the very name he said don't call him by. What a contradiction. See now Jesus is the one who said don't call him Simon. Then turns around and call him by that very name. That he said don't call him. Help me, Lord. Why would you call him by the very name you said not to call him? He said, I call him Peter because Peter means rock. Peter represents the person that can hear divine revelation. Peter represents the person who has spiritual insight. And Jesus said, that's the point. I don't need to talk to Peter. I need to talk to Simon. Peter's strong. Simon weak. So I got to say Simon, Simon. Mm. I, I, I need Peter to know. I don't care how strong you are. There's still a Simon left in you. You, you sit here like your past is clean, but there's so many Simons sitting in here this morning. So somebody, somebody catch you on the wrong day. Somebody catch you at the wrong time. Somebody catch you in the wrong position and see how that Simon won't come out just as fast. Oh, there's a Simon in you. The devil has a way of pushing your simonic button. He has a way to get you under your simonic skin. But here's the good news of the text. Jesus is praying for the Simon in you. See, y'all don't, y'all don't, y'all don't know when to shout. Do you know why that should have that, that should have blessed you? B because people put Simon on social media. People put your Simon in the streets. People put your Simon in gossip and rumor columns. People talking about you when you're trying to do the best that you can. But you ought to be glad that you got a Savior who knows you're going through the, you're going to mess up. You're going to trip up. You're going to even file out. But he still don't disqualify you. He don't kick you out, but he's praying for you in your weak moments. Somebody need to rejoice because the only reason I didn't curse them out. I ain't get a good reaction. The only reason I didn't cuss them out. The only reason my hand didn't connect to their face. The only reason I ain't drive over there and get them what they asking for. Somebody used to say, you keep on marketing for a whooping, I'm going to give you a whooping. The only reason I didn't do it because Christ was praying for me. Mm. He praying for me. Don't let the old you mess up your new purpose. I get so sick of talking to people who act like they so holy and don't do nothing wrong. I will leave the conversation. If some supposed to be Christians, I don't even, I speak to you, but in my mind, I'm like, Ricky, just keep it moving. They so fake and phony. If you don't know me by now, you will never know me. I'm going to give it to you real, and I hope you take it. I'm never going to disrespect you. I love every last one of you. But just know when I'm talking about Simon, I'm talking about me. Catch me on the wrong day. Push me the wrong way. Talk like you about that business. I'm going to give you everything you're asking for. But before I get to that point, I'm going to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you right now. Because my hand ready to connect, not clapping, but everything with him. 
Let me get to my second point. Y'all ain't finna have me acting like I ain't got no sense. That's just my assignment in me. Number two, there's moments when God will give you divine permission for a satanic purpose. Ooh, that sounds so evil. Pastor says, say it again. There is a moment when God will give you divine permission. I'm sorry, divine permission for satanic purposes. Walk, walk with me on this. Walk with me on this. I got to prove it to you from the Bible. Job chapter 1. The sons and daughters came in the presence of God. And Satan came amongst them. Can, can, can I tell you this? What that suggests is you can't ever come together in the holy moment without a satanic presence. Satan is always in the midst. Y'all know the story God asked Satan, where have you been? He say, I've been to and fro. Now that's just my translation. But seeking whom I may devour. God says, you don't know anybody. Satan say, I don't have anybody. God says, has you ever considered my servant Job? He's faithful. He's committed. He has integrity. But Satan says, you got your protection around him. Y'all missed it. The very word Satan used suggests that we ought to celebrate. The very words he used says we should have celebrated the only way Satan knows that there is a hedge, he's been trying to get at Job, but he can't get to him. He said, I've been to and fro. God said, so you telling me you ain't see nobody out there? Not even old Job? God, I seen him. But, but I don't know if y'all ever seen a hedge in front of a house. You can't touch the house before you touch the hedge. So Satan said, you got your protective hedge around him. I can't touch it. So that means the protective hedge is around you. But God got to get a permission for you to get touched. So in order for you to get touched, it's always the purpose that God's got for you. Because he want to see the ultimate blessing from the touching event. Let me keep going. I want, I want to make this make sense. If God gave him permission, that means he's already equipped you with everything you need to receive the victory. Don't forget Jesus prayed for his faith. Y'all remember the, 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 the phrase, faith not fail? See, it's, 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 it's eclipto, eclipto in the Greek. Eclipse in the Greek word is where we get the word, the English word, eclipse. Right? Okay, so 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 just, just walk me real quick. Now an eclipse, you know what the eclipse is, don't you? An eclipse is when the moon. That's what I'm talking about. The, 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 the moon covers the sun and blocks the sun. It doesn't erase the sun. It doesn't push the sun out the way. It just gets in front of the sun. So, so you don't get the effects of the sun. And, and we all know that, that the sun will make you hot, make you tired, you start sweating. You don't feel like you can make it. And some folks pass out. Some folks can't make it. So what that eclipse is, when that moon moves in front of it, it's just, it just blocks it. So, so watch this. What Jesus said is when I pray for you, it ain't nothing but an eclipse. And the power and grace of my moon blocks the sun of the devil's intent. So when Jesus is doing the praying, he's also doing the blocking. So everything you think you're getting, you ain't receiving half of it. Because Jesus is protecting you. Jesus is securing you. Jesus has positioned himself in front of you to make sure everything that comes your way, whether it's in, in front of me or whether it's behind me, on the side of me, I'm covered.
I'm, 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 I'm covered. Let me give you number three. God provides an answer before Satan presents the problem. God provides the answer before Satan presents the problem. Before. Okay. Let me present this in text. Then I'm done. It's one word. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked for y'all that he might sift y'all as wheat. But I pray for you that your faith not fail. That one word I'm looking for and when he said, and when, 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 when. Not I hope. Not, 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 not if. Not suppose. But when you return. When you return, he says the devil is coming to get you. But I need you to know before he shows up, I already told you you're going to bounce back. Let that sit on you. Don't miss this. Scholar suggests what Jesus is talking to him about is when he goes and denies Jesus three times. That ain't happened yet. See, see, so, so, so what the devil wants to do is steal in the future. But Jesus prophesied the deliverance in the presence before the future ever shows up. So I'm going to pray for you. So when that time comes, now, now check this out. Peter still denied Christ. Say, thank you, Lord. Before, before your problem ever shows up, Jesus already said, you will return to me. Say, thank you, Lord, one more time. Before your problem ever gets in your life, he's already said, when you return. So, 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 so if you don't know the story, Peter denied Christ three times when they took Jesus away. Not only did he deny him, some of my preacher buddies, we have our little laughs and jokes about the verse where it says that Peter, Peter cussed at the maid servant. And we, we, we get into our laughter of, of what he said and how he said it. I don't know no Jesus, but he used some explicits in there just to make sure that he gets away and save his own life. But he denied him three times. Peter being a Galilean, he had a distinct voice. So they can tell who he is by his accent. So he was approached and he was den and he denied three times. But Jesus said, I'm going to pray for your faith. Which means, I know you're going to deny me. But when you come back to me, I'm going to exalt you to the highest of the highest position. So even though you messed up and messy, even though you lie all the time, even though your flesh means no good, Jesus said, I've been praying for you. And when you return, I got something for you. He already knows that we cannot handle our everyday situations. He already knows how uncouth we really are. He already knows that this flesh cannot please him in no way. So that's why he had to send his Holy Spirit. But prior to that, it's an event that had to take place. See, we look at Calvary and we say it as if it's a part of our everyday lives, as if it's just a story. But it's a way of life for Christians. We have to understand when he was marched from courtroom to courtroom, when he was lied on, when, when, when they beat him all night long, when they had soldiers to, to, to smart him on his head, they had professional, professional prize fighters that was beating him and beating him. They had a nine-tail whip that had stones and rocks and gravel that when it, when, it, when it touched his body, it ripped away skin and meat to the bones. We have to really get into the word and feel what Jesus symbolically was going through. That's the way that you got to believe it. Can you, can you imagine dying for the same people that talk about you? We can't have standing when we see them. Can you imagine 
dying for the people that spread rumors on your name? Can you imagine dying for the one that robbed you, stole your car, and broke into your house, and you see him every day, and he tell you, I'm going to rob you again? And you don't do nothing. I, I want to make it plain to you. But at the end of the day, we following a man who knew his assignment. He, he, he knew it was going to come with great turmoil. He, he knew it was going to come with great trials and tribulations. But at the end of it, he didn't stray away from the assignment. He knew if he did stray away, he had too much to lose. So he saw me down there still looking up saying, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I know I ain't no good. So he took every whip. He took every hit. He took every lie. They put him on the cross. But prior to putting him on the cross, he had to put it on his back and walk up the hill. But then when they lifted him up, I, I had a chance for myself to say, Lord, thank you. I can thank him because I realized that I should have been the one that was on that cross but he took my sins and put them on the cross just for me when they lifted him up and spread him wide with the crown on his head with the fake robe on his body I can say thank you because I know that he died just for me I know that he gave up the ghost just for me I know that he told God Father forgive him just for me so when I stand here this morning, I'm standing saying, Lord, thank you just for me. Because the moment that I react to the responses that's coming my way, I got to realize that I got too much to lose. When I look at my family, when I look at my professionalism, when I look at how God has brought me from the streets to the pulpit, I got too much to lose. So I can tell him thank you. Don't, don't mind me if I get excited. Don't mind me if I shout because I don't shout for you. I shout for me. When you know where God has brought you from. When you know where God has delivered you from. You don't care what nobody think about you. You don't care how they talk about you. You can say thank you. It ain't never bragging when I have the opportunity to look at my family, when I drive up in my driveway and look at my house, when I look at my truck and my wife vehicle. It ain't never bragging because you ain't with me when I'm telling them thank you. You ain't with me when I was struggling and ain't have nothing to eat. You wasn't with me, so don't tell me how to praise it. Everybody got something to say. Everybody got something. How they gonna ridicule you? How they gonna put you down? Where they want you to be? But you keep on praising God. You keep on praising in spite of. In spite of what you don't have. In spite of what you're looking to. Keep telling them thank you. You ain't going to tell me I knew when I was a little boy that I was going to have a son going to play D1 football. You ain't going to tell me that I would have had a talented daughter who can draw like nobody's business. You ain't going to tell me I would have married a, a, a beautiful wife with a degree, educated parents. You not going to tell me that based on where I'm from. So when I say thank you. I know what the I know what the cross means to me. I, I know what Jesus means to me. I know how good he been to me to see my niece who they said had stage four or five renal kidney disease after losing her mama two weeks prior. We get hit with that news that she may be out of here too. So you ain't going to tell me how to praise him. You, you ain't going to tell me how to give him all the glory. 
because they told her by the time she hit 18 it was a chance that she may not get what she needed then we got the call and they said how fast can you get to Gainesville because we got the kidney that she needed not only did we get the transplant not only did she realize how good God is the Lord blessed her to go to dental school she's in a profession that her mom would have been so proud of being the middle child going off the family with everything paid for and we around here complaining about what we don't have we around here talking about what we ain't got how we want this and how we want that you better thank him for what he already gave you so when you see me praising him when you see me saying hallelujah just know I know what Jesus means to me Amen. Amen. And the good news is that he got up. Yeah, he was crucified. He was beaten ridiculously horrible. And he was buried, as the preacher was saying, but the beautiful news is, is that he, he, he got up. Which is good news to us because that's the promise that he's given us is that when we leave this world, we have no kinds of worries because he's going to resurrect us. And that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. There may be somebody here today in hearing the word of God. Might have been touched by what God is saying. If the Holy Spirit is touching your heart right now, the invitation of the church is extended. Through the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through that gospel, there is salvation. So if God is blessing you by touching your heart right now, by knocking at the door of your heart, why don't you come? Why don't you come? I have so much trouble, trouble in my way. time he was preaching I was thinking about Greg some of y'all know that testimony I'm telling you and that's what life will do when you're sitting and being attacked from every side and a lot of times don't know why the Holy Spirit it is he who is keeping you because if Greg would be released just like he said it would be disastrous 
I just hope we all got that message, that word. It is powerful. You know, I'm not trying to re-preach this sermon. There's no way to do that. But I, I'm praying that you got what he was saying. We all have the old self still there. Don't be discouraged because, because of it. Just call on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because trouble is going to always be attacking you. Trouble is going to always be in your way. You know. Thank you for that word, brother. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. See, he's keeping on trying to get me to sing. I'm not. Okay. Let's let's see what uh, visitors got for us today. Trouble in my way. Yeah. Huh? Oh, is worship been given? All right. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. Yeah. Time for giving. Father, we thank you for what we are about to give in the midst of this ministry of giving. Bless those that are given, bless the hearts of those so that they can give according to their faith and their joy in Christ. Bless us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Keep on giving because it's it really true that you can be God's giving no matter we do thank you for what has been given for the furtherance of your kingdom for this is our prayer in Jesus name and we shall all say together Amen you try Amen 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 alright now it's time for the hospitality ministry Amen do 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 I feel so good today. I'm telling you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Giving honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. Pastor Gregory. All right, Sister Rain. Mm -hmm. Members and friends, good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Sister Alinda Rahim. At this time, we'd like to acknowledge our visitors. As I call your name, will you please stand? We have Ishmael. Is that Pobon? All right, all right, okay. Bless you. God, and your friend Isabella. All right. All right. Amen. Are there any visitors' name I did not call? Will you please stand and give your name and church affiliation, please? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Your name again? Brenda Phillips. Thank you. Okay. All right. Miller. Is there oh, anyone? Miller. Okay. All right. Is there anyone else? On behalf of the pastor and the St. Joseph family, we would like to thank you for worshiping with us today. We have been blessed by your presence here. And remember, this is the church where everybody is somebody Amen. and Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Ever, so, and black bottom. Amen. Thank you for coming. And please come again. Yeah. Thank you. Amen. 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 You know, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the two young men sitting on the front row. You know, usually young men try to find the, the furthest seat, the back seat, you know, within the church. But these young men, they, they're sitting up front so they can hear well. 
handsome young men. Amen. Pray that God will bless them, strengthen them. Amen. Amen. Afternoon, everyone. But, All right, but Sister Pastor, if I may, so I believe they are friends of our Tatiana who was baptized this morning. That's right. That's correct. That is correct. Yeah. Praise the Lord, yeah. right? They yeah. came to support and to be a part of what um, God has led Tatiana. That's right. Thank you. That's a blessing. Amen. Great afternoon, everybody. To God be the glory. Pastor Pulpit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Simon, Simon. All of you all. <laughs> everybody. Oh, mm -hmm. bless his holy name. <laughs> Brother Simon said, y'all can't tell him what to shout about. Oh, I could have hollered. <laughs> I could have threw the camera in the air. Praise his holy name. Thank Amen. You. Oh, God, and say thank you. I do have announcements. Mm -hmm. My name is Sister Hope Jones, and I'm pulling it together. All right. All right. There we go. Announcements. I do want to start today off with a beautiful card. Y'all know I love cards. Mm -hmm. They are so beautiful. Yeah. Such a thoughtful thing to do to take the time. So let me read it to you. It says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Yes. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. Mm -hmm. Luke 6 38. Ain't right. that right? Amen. All right. Prayer, praying the Lord blesses your giving heart in abundance measure. In abundant measure. Thank you. This is from the um, Brown family. It is a very nice, long, loving um, All right. sentiment that she, they wrote out for us. Mm -hmm. Am I reading it, Sister Brown? Praise God. July the 14th, 2024. Uh, St. Joseph Missionary Baptist Church, words cannot express how truly grateful our family is to you for each and every person that helped to make Minister uh, slash Reverend Brown's ordination service a memorable uh, everlasting week. Thank you to Pastor Gregory and First Lady Gregory. Thank you to all of the deacons and deaconesses that prayed for us and participated. Those that decorated the fellowship hall, our photographers, and the culinary ministry. Oh, it goes on and on and on. Praise God. That began preparing days before the event. Our family felt so loved, and we are so very thankful for your kindness, your hard work, and love that was shown to us. We love and appreciate you all. Sincerely, the Brown family. Amen. 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 To God be the glory. We did do a good that job. Is, didn't that is so Lord. wonderful. So wonderful. <laughs> isn't it, isn't I just it? want to tell, uh, you know, don't muzzle that baby. Let us oh. say amen. Nobody else is. Let us say all the amens he wants to. <laughs> yes. Well, thank, thank you for that, St. Joseph. Yeah. That, Pastor, that is um, kind of hard. She's pressing to come through. The That's babies so are our babies. Yeah. But, you know, so what? we thank all of you all who allow yeah. and love on her for um, allow babies. But One of the signs of a growing church is always babies that, right? crying in the church, talking to church. Yeah. You know, Sometimes when it gets quiet and you don't hear that, you know, you there, there's an issue. That's, yeah, there's an issue. <laughs> well, they make enough noise for a bunch of babies. Amen. So, praise God. We thank you for that. All Amen. right. But going on, I do, I do, I do have another um, announcement, if I may. Business meeting. Mm -hmm. Whose business? St. Joseph's business. business. Yes. Yes, it is scheduled for um, August. Mm -mm. August 8th, yes, August the 12th, 12th at yes. 7 p.m. here mm -hmm. at St. Joseph. Please, please, please avail yourself if all possible. It again is St. Joseph business, okay? Mm -hmm. That's right. All righty. Um, is there anything that I may have missed? That, uh, we are reminded today at 4 um, p.m. we're going to um, support our uh, pastor, Gibson. Mm -hmm. Right. At, what's the name of the church? I didn't New bring Galilee. Up. Thank you at New Galilee at 4 p.m. Amen. Pastor, are you asking for everyone to attend in their ministries or just attend? Amen. Amen. Okay. Is, the, is the address of the church on the, uh, on the, very good. It's on okay. It's okay, on very program. good. Okay. It took me a couple of times Googling it to get there. It's kind of, it's kind of, uh, what is it? It's on the, it's okay. on the back of the program. What yeah. is it? 425 right. Woodlawn Avenue. Right. 425 Woodlawn Avenue. Yeah. All right. If Thank you go, you. if you turn off of McDuff and on Edison, uh -huh. and go down, 
Well, maybe that's why I get all crooked up, huh? 425. <laughs> Stockton, Off of Stockton instead of here. Okay. If you're not in the Stockton right. area, then you're wrong. Well, that's probably why I've been missing it then. Is it Woodlawn? Okay. W O O D L A W N Avenue. Woodlawn Avenue. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I just want to caution you because I don't want you to get discouraged. It's kind of tricky a little bit. Right. That's where my wife's kinfolk live up in there in Mixon Town. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I did. I believe I jumped out of order, Pastor, mm -hmm. on the um, after uh, acknowledgement of visitors, but the youth department presentation. Um, we do have birthdays. Do, would you like for them to come up first or me to continue with the birthdays? Oh, uh, are you through with the announcements? I am finished with the announcements other okay. than birthdays. Okay, all right, then birthdays. Continue with birthdays? Yes, ma'am. My apologies, um, St. Joseph, I jumped up out of order. All right, if you are selling a bir celebrating a birthday in the month of July, you are more than worthy to be celebrated. Stand up and let us celebrate you. Give God the glory for that birthday. Woo! All I don't right. know what it is about these sort of jokes men, but they're some good looking men with them haircuts. Oh, <laughs> who who is that new visitor standing up over there? <laughs> ain't it? Who, uh, who, uh, yeah, I don't okay. know. <laughs> I don't know if he's a good looking man. Y'all know who that is. Yes, we do. All right, we're going to start. Handsome as he can be, I'm yeah, telling you. looking good. Um, somebody else got a haircut up there. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, good yeah. Too. I tell oh, yeah. you, praise God. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to stay in my business. So we're going to start in the choir. Sister Delta. Sister Delta, Precious, July 22. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. What All you right. say? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 17 again, Sister. <laughs> yes, Lord. And our young Simon. Young brother Simon. July 18, July 18. Oh, All right. 18, yes, Lord. Oh, Amen. Amen. Sister Corey.
So um, after me will come the um, youth ministry um, presentation. Okay, all Praise right. God. Thank you. 50 years. Boy, there ought to be a special celebration. Don't, don't you think, man? That's, that's older than who you are, boy. I'm telling you. <laughs> this thing has been married for 50 years. <laughs> Oh, man. There go the darlings. Look at them. Good day. Good day. Uh, Pastor Gregory, yes, Pastor ma Gregory, St. Joseph, friends and family. Yeah, all right. Uh, we want to say... Just a simple thank you for all the support, financial support, the financial and the, and the prayers. Um, but we want to share a short presentation with you all, just to give you some visuals on our trip from to St. Thomas. Yes. And y'all know I'm a person of a little word. So I'm more visual.
what's coming up next is we're going to make new partnerships. We gave our parents a youth, uh, uh, needs assessment to figure out what their needs are so we can start to uh, meet some of their needs. We're going to do more youth experiences, more traveling with them. Um, we're going to start parent support groups. We have a school partnership coming up with Icon Preparatory and Maddie V. And um, me and Pastor had this conversation. I just want to share my heart with the church. When I was coming up, the church was a place. I won't say Joe's to be the place. Not mm -hmm. just a church, but the church. And for our youth, it's already becoming that. I had uh, Mecca, which is one of our faithful youths. We were going back and forth about the next trip. I said, Mecca, you ain't going. She said, I'm definitely going. This is my church. All right. All so right. we're catching that fire. Yes. We're catching that fire. Yes. So just continue to pray with us as we try to do more for our youth and this Black Bottom community. Amen. 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 Good day yeah. to Good day. Pastor Greggy and St. Joseph. Yeah. I just want to say thank you for helping us mm -hmm. bringing our church family to St. Thomas. Mm -hmm. Pastor Gregory and Sister Gregory, we love you so much. Mm -hmm. Here is a little gift to show you how much we appreciate everything you do for us. Amen. 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 And St. Joseph, St. Joseph, be on, be on the watch. You're going to be hearing announcements that are becoming from him at some point. At some point. Amen. Some didn't hear me. I'm saying that at some point we will be hearing announcements uh, from this young man, you know, demonstrating that God, as Pastor Yim used to say, is pregnant. Okay, that, uh, but we will, we will hear that. I'm not, I'm trying not to take his thunder, but uh, I'm almost, not ever tired, but him coming to me, uh, Pastor, I got this, and I got, this. you know, well, you need to come and tell the church. <laughs> and the calling, I'm telling you, it's hard. It, we run, we run. Anytime a preacher come and tell me that I'm running toward it, I'm excited about it, I kind of gringe a little bit looking at it. But when one comes and talks about the running, the dodging, the calling, not wanting it, I get excited because that's one evidence that God is really drawing the man and the man is not willing to go. What does that say? That says that then God is able to use that man for his pleasure because the man is out of the way. You know, so uh, St. Joseph, we, we are a growing church. There's so many things that's happening during the week. Sunday is just a celebration day. This church is during the week, is busy and is getting busier with ministries with ministries and it's growing, it's growing, it's growing. And the city of Jacksonville and everybody around is starting to pay attention. They are starting to see and started to scratch in their heads what's going on, what's going on. You know, but God is blessing us. God is doing wondrous, wondrous things through us. And so I, I, I urge you to keep praying that God keeps his hand on us Keep the faith in knowing that God is recognizing your faithfulness and most of all, your availability. Amen. God never called a man, never called a woman because of her knowledge or talent. As a matter of fact, when he calls them, he don't want that on them because then they come in their own strength. You know, he calls a person that simply is available and then he grows them and strengthens them and develop the gift to where they would be a benefit to the church. That's how God works it. So.
just just understand that St. Joseph is blessed beyond measure. Now, I see the seats. That's just showing that we have the availability for those that are coming. That's all that's saying. That's all that is saying. Yeah. That's simply saying we have the availability. We don't have to worry about no new building pro projects, nothing like that. We got the available space. And so God is going to eventually deal with that. So don't be concerned about that when you come, please. Know that God sees us and God is doing his thing. Uh, with that, where are we now? Time to go home? Okay, all right. Well, time to leave from here. Don't forget, 4 o'clock, I really want to see you there. That's our brother. He is so excited, nervous to death, and that he should be. But he wants to see his family as he's being uh, blessed with his installation. Amen? All right, 4 o'clock. All right. Reverend Simon, come and please uh, with your final remarks and benediction. Thank you. Reverend Brown, we're going to look like we're going to have OQ up here in a minute. <laughs> Q side up in the pulpit. Ain't no stepping up here, Joy. No stomping. <laughs> Inside joke. All right, guys, we ready to eat. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever. Life needs you. Let me encourage you. Let me speak life to you. You can depend on God. See you through. You can depend on me to pray for you. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and ever. And the church say, well, I pray for you. You pray for me. And watch God change things.